hello everyone welcome back again to my youtube channel thank you all for stopping by if you are new here i say very big welcome to you and to my returning viewers you guys rock today's story is going to be on is going to be on autogele and we'll be learning how to make the v-shape first a v-shape autogele is a very a v-shape base for an autogele is a very beautiful and there's this classy and unique view it gives to a gele when style even when and time so we'll be learning how to make a beautiful v-shape base autogele and on the streets of youtube we have different methods of making a v-shape base but this particular method is a very simple and unique one so i'll be teaching you guys how to make it in a very simple way and it is also beginner friendly so stay tuned as we get into the tutorial proper thank you i have my material that i'll be using for this v-shape base and i'll be bringing out my measurements for first and first i'll be bringing out the measurements for my base as that is what we are learning this time so the measurements goes thus 28 inches in two places and 230 inches why i'm making it 30 inches is because i have a limited fabric so i'm trying to mine my, my material but first thing first i'll be bringing out 30 inches first as i'll be adding another material to join at the back so i'll show you when when i get to that place because the material is limited so i'm trying to manage what i have so i'll be bringing out 28 inches in two places first then 31 then 30 inches so now that i have it all cut out i'll be bringing out the 228 inches to form my pleat there's a detailed video on how to sew on the sewing machine as i'll not be showing you the process in which i use in sewing on the machine i'll just be showing you how i did the pleat um how to form the pleat and how i came about it so this is my measurement for the base then that is my two inches for 20 that is my 28 inches in two places and the 30 inches i'll be using to join it together so like i said there's a little video on how to pleat on the sewing machine as i'll not be showing that process so that i'll go to my machine now to sew and i'll show you how it is after sewing so this is my 18 inches that i'll be using to tape each side of the jelly after sewing and joining and i also have this one that i'll be using for my vector tape that's what i'll be placing my vector tape on when attaching it to the base so i'll show you when we get there so now let me show you after so after sewing this is what i have this is my pleat so i was able to bring out six pleats from the 228 inches so now i'll be cutting it into two to form my v so after cutting it into this is what i have then now i'll be placing it on each other to form a letter v so you make sure each point each edge is joining each other like the edge of each pleat is joining each other see the v now you can see my v is v -ing. this is what we call the v base so this is the v then i'll be attaching the 30 inches that i told you earlier and on the other hand you can make it a letter l first before shifting it to the v either ways this is what you're still going to arrive at just make sure each edge are connecting each other so this is my 30 inches after joining so this is what i have like i said that i'll be using another material to join it as this material is not enough so this is the line like i use in joining the other 30. so this is the 18 inches i told you earlier on that i'll be using to tape each side to have a neat a neat work so i'll be using this 18 inches i'll be cutting it into two so that each part will be for each side so after cutting this is what i have so this is it after cutting into two so now i'll be taking each part for each side so before even joining it to this side i'll be using i'll be this is where my vector tape comes in so my vector tape will be will be will be at the top at the side of the place we have a rough side and then 
smooth side a, and a rough side and hairy side so the rough side will be the one on the left while the right side the hairy side will be the one on the right let me come again the rough side will be on the left while the hairy side will be on the right so in other ways the rough side will be the one sleeping down while the hairy side will be the one on top so now that i have it you can see it here now the hair is the rough side is one sleeping on the right on the left side we are with joining that 18 inches to sew and make that side neat so after everything this is what i have and this is my v-shape looking beautiful and this is the hairy side the hairy part of the vector tape sitting on the right side and the 18 inches i use in joining it at that side you can see it guys this is very beautiful i can't know if i that this is the best and the simplest method you can ever come across on the streets of youtube so right now i'll be wearing it on my manicure to see how beautiful this has been so far so while we're putting it on your head or on your, on your manicure just make sure the v is centered at the center of your head down to the bridge of your nose that is how you're going to measure it if it's at the center so then you come to the back to join with the adjustable closure which is the vector tape then having done that you come and tie at the back so if you want your hair to come if you don't want your hair to come out you can just flip it over and tie but if you want it like flip it down and tie but if you want your hair to come out you just need to roll it so that your hair can show then you find a way to tie at the back just not too tight but just with a soft hand just tying it temporarily and that is that on this beautiful tutorial so guys i hope you learn one or two from this tutorial if you do don't forget to give us a thumbs up and please guys subscribe to our channel please and share the beautiful videos we have on our youtube channel share with your family and friends so they can get to learn from these beautiful tutorials as well and please guys don't forget to on your notification bell so as to get inspired whenever we upload a new video as we have a lot of juicy DIY videos and many more hot out gallery tutorials, makeup tutorials on this channel. So guys, this is the part I'll be using for the frame. But that'll be on my next class, the next video that'll be coming up. So stay tuned and get and on your notification bell so you guys to get into five whenever I post that in the video. So there's this tip I want to show you guys. If you are working with to get a machine thread for your for your white threading why stitching so all you just need to do is look for the pieces so that all, your, all those your pieces will not go to waste just look for some bring out the wool in between you can see how the wool is bringing coming out so there's nothing that's going to go to waste when working so all this um material that looks like waste you just cut the edges then you bring out the wool in between so you have a matching thread for your threading and stitching so i know you love me yes i love you too, guys so so with this you can bring out as many as possible wool until the end of the ash okay until you can see it is get it has gotten stuck or the this thing is finished so you can just bring out as many as possible wool and you can do that to us all the leftover pieces that you have so with that you have a matching thread for whatever it is you want to do either most especially if you are working with a ruffle style so the thread will matching to be the exact thread that you are using so this is how i used to make use of my materials or that you think it's going to be a waste this is how to put your waste into good use so guys i hope you find this helpful you can also give this a try and see how it works how beautiful this is going to look while trading so that will be all for now thank you all for always staying tuned thank you all for sticking to this channel i love you until next time so guys see you all in my next video until next time, bye-bye.